Our main story is the discovery of 39 bodies in a lorry container in Essex. The vehicle, which is thought to have crossed the English Channel from Zeebrugge in Belgium to the port of Tilbury in Essex, was apparently being driven by a 25-year-old man from Northern Ireland who has been arrested on suspicion of murder. Police say that identifying the victims is the first priority, but they say it is likely to be a lengthy process. Well, we have full reports for you on this tragedy, and my colleague Ben Brown is in Greys in Essex with all the latest for us this evening. And in the last two or three minutes, the police have actually moved the lorry involved from this industrial estate in Greys in Essex away to what they call a secure location. They want to be able to take their time in that secure location to try to identify the bodies still on board and to remove them in, uh, with dignity and respect, they say. They really want to show dignity and respect for the victims uh, of this unimaginable tragedy, as the Prime Minister has called it. They're also saying that they are still holding a 25-year-old man from Northern Ireland in custody on suspicion of murder. And the tractor part of this lorry was registered in Northern Ireland. Let's get this report on the latest developments from John Donison. The grim discovery was made early this morning in this container on the back of a lorry at an industrial park in Greys. Forensics officers have been working at the scene all day. Police say identifying the bodies will be a long and complicated operation. Officers now say the container was transported from Zabrugge in Belgium and docked at Perfleet in Essex last night before being moved to the Waterglade Industrial Park nearby. CCTV shows a lorry carrying the container arriving at the park. It's not clear where the lorry originates from. Police came to the scene after they were alerted by the ambulance service at 1.40 this morning. A murder investigation was launched and the lorry driver, a 25-year-old man from Northern Ireland, was arrested on suspicion of murder and remains in police custody. At this stage, we have not identified where the victims are from or their identities, and we anticipate this could be a lengthy process. We will continue to work alongside many other partner agencies to find out what led to these deaths. In the House of Commons this afternoon, the Home Secretary suggested she supported tougher sentences for people traffickers. What we have seen, basically, through the actions of these traffickers um, is the worst of humanity. And it is right that we use our law enforcement and all aspects of the law through existing legislation to make sure that justice is served and that the perpetrators are prosecuted. Local people have begun to leave flowers at the scene of the tragedy. I'm completely and utterly shocked um, and devastated that that's actually happened here today, especially in this area. I mean, my mum only, my only works down the road, my dad works down there, so this is the area that I, you know, I drive down all the time. So for that to happen is I'm completely shocked. This evening, the industrial park remains sealed off. The bodies are expected to be removed this evening. In order to ensure that we maintain the dignity of the people who've sadly lost their lives, we will be moving the lorry and the trailer shortly. Once that movement has happened, we will remain here to complete some scene examinations before we can allow all the business operators back to their premises. The police investigation will first have to establish where the victims came from and then who they might have paid to bring them here. John Donison, BBC News. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the police say they are still holding a 25-year-old man from Northern Ireland on suspicion of murder. Now, we gather that he has been named locally in Northern Ireland as Mo Robinson. Mo Robinson, the 25-year-old arrested in Essex this morning on suspicion of murder. He has been named locally in Northern Ireland as the driver of the lorry and remains in custody, uh, having been arrested by Essex police in the early hours of this morning. And let's also just show you pictures of the lorry itself being uh, driven away from here, away from the Waterglade Industrial Estate where it was uh, parked and found overnight. And it's been taken to a secure location. It was driven away just before five o'clock this evening by police. And the Deputy Chief Constable was telling us that uh, the police really want to take their time in 
a place of dignity and respect to examine the bodies, to try to identify the bodies still on board, the 39 bodies, 38 of them adults and one a teenager, and also ultimately, of course, then to remove those bodies as well. So, who are these people? Where are they from? Let's talk to Anthony Steen, Chair of the Human Trafficking Foundation. Uh, and that is the first question. Uh, these 39 people, the victims of what the Prime Minister called an unimaginable tragedy, where might they be from, uh, in your view? Well, first of all, I agree with the Prime Minister. This is actually nothing to do with the government and, and nothing to do with Brexit. What, in fact, you're witnessing is things that are happening probably every day, either going across the English Channel or in airports, or in this case, terribly, appallingly and sadly, in the back of a lorry. These are people probably not trafficked. They are probably people who are asylum seekers, fleeing persecution, probably Afghanistan or Syria. That's my hunch. And they came via Bulgaria uh, and were delivered to Britain. I believe they were escaping uh, appalling tyranny in their countries and they desperately wanted to get away. That is totally different from if they were trafficked, if they were deceived into situations which didn't actually happen here in Britain. They probably weren't. They were probably deliberately asylum seekers trying to get to Britain for a better life but not necessarily deceived. And that's quite an important difference. That's who they probably are. Uh, and why they were in a sealed unit is hard to imagine, but I have heard of cases, other cases, where similar things happened, but fortunately the other people survived. This is an appalling case, and it focuses attention on the desperation of people leaving tyr tyranny and hardship and violence. And so what, in your view, should the authorities both here in the UK and across Europe and across the world be doing now that they're not doing to, to try and stop this sort of thing happening? Um, first of all, one's got to accept we live in a, a global village. It's easy to get away and get across seas, get across airspace and arrive in different countries. It's a new scenario and there's no way you're going to halt the movement of people away from hardship, horror and um, violence uh, in a way which in the past they couldn't do. Now they can. So the first point is you're not going to change that. Secondly, you're not going to, however good your border force is and however good your management of the police is or however good your customs people are, you will going to get uh, smugglers getting people into this country and other countries uh, where, in fact, they are not entitled to come. And so it's nothing to do with sentencing the traffickers. It's about preventing victims getting into the position they were in this case. And it's not going to change easily. This emanates in countries riven by poverty and people desperate to get out. And they're dealing with people, criminals, who can smuggle them in and can get them through the systems. And in this case, I think it's tragic, they failed and they was exposed what had happened. If they hadn't died, they would have just jumped out of the lorry and disappeared. They probably would have disappeared into someone's house. Uh, it may be organised all the way along. On the other hand, the smugglers may only have uh, contracted to get them to Britain, which sadly they did dead. The question is, could the border force or the police or anybody do any more? In my view is, it's possible with a clearer border force uh, and a bigger border force we could intercept more people who shouldn't be allowed here. And, of course, after Brexit, everybody will be an asylum seeker who tries to get here because there won't any be any longer free borders. So it's a question there will be a change, and we've got to adapt to that change because we're likely to get more people coming in, even though we've got so-called secure borders. So all in all, I think there's a lot of things that could be done, but whether it would have any effect in the long run from these 
war-stricken countries wanting to come to a country they believe has good human rights and will treat them humanely, I don't think we're going to be able to reduce or stop that. It's human nature wanting to get away from terrible, terrible situations. And we in this country should be magnanimous enough to recognize we can't accept everybody, but we need to accept people who are fleeing from war-torn countries and may be more welcoming and more hospitable. And that may be something which needs to be considered. But certainly, I think the police are doing their job and they're doing them well. I think the border force may need a little bit of extra help. But I don't think you would have discovered this because it was all sealed and that made it even more difficult. So the answer is, it's a tragedy. I'm not sure you're going to stop other tragedies from happening. Anthony Steen, thank you very much indeed for uh, your thoughts and analysis. Anthony Steen, their chair of the uh, Human Trafficking Foundation. Well, just to say that the Essex police uh, have said that they are working very hard indeed to try to identify those 39 victims, but they are warning it may take some time and they are appealing to any family members who are concerned about relatives or loved ones or friends to get in touch with them. They're also trying to piece together the exact roots of the lorry. Uh, they've now revised their views on where it came from. They think it came into the UK uh, from Zeebrugge, uh, direct into uh, the port here in Essex, and they arrived here uh, where we are uh, shortly after midnight. Well, that's the latest from Greys in Essex. Hugh, back to you in the studio. Ben, many thanks. Um, ben Brown there for us uh, in Greys. And uh, just as an added note, uh, to what Ben was saying there. Uh, the harbour master at Zeebrugge, that's the port uh, uh, where this uh, truck uh, originated, um, has been telling the BBC in the past few minutes that uh, right now there are 4,000 trailers which uh, make their way back and forth uh, between Zeebrugge and the UK every day, 4,000 every day. Um, and uh, in a statement he said, the summer was relatively calm, but in the past few weeks we have found migrants every day in our searches and a unit of UK border forces works in the port in Zeebrugge uh, in collaboration with the Belgian Maritime Police. But um, just that message there from the harbour master in Zeebrugge that uh, uh, you know, it's a huge volume of traffic uh, and that they have noticed uh, an increase, a marked increase in recent weeks uh, in uh, the number of migrants trying to get through.